Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Monday night. It is the Earth Ma Earthmaster here on this end. 10.32 p.m. California time, February 26, 2024. Again, Monday night out here in California. Uh, latest activity here on the globe looks like a 2.2 there into the California region. We'll get to that here in just a little bit. I uh, want to cover the activity here that we are looking at uh, this morning in Idaho. Uh, they've seen a, a decent earthquake this morning, a 4.9 coming in uh, to the area uh, just to the uh, north of Boise, Idaho area. Now this region can see some decent earthquakes. Let me pull back this map and show you guys the area. Uh, last, well, about three years ago, three to four years ago, we had a decent six-pointer out here across the Sawtooth Fault System, which sits right about here. Uh, this specific fault area, there's a, there's actually quite a bit of smaller faults that run here around this region. But I wanted to pull up uh, historical earthquake activity out here. Uh, basically did 4.5 and above uh, since records have been kept. Uh, and we can go back all the way to, uh, oh, I don't know, some of these go way back. But uh, also at the same time, let me see here. Yeah, some of these go back to about 1935 or so. I'm not for sure why this splits off like that, but uh, yeah, so large earthquakes can occur out here. Um, again, the area here around the Sawtooth Fault System seen that six-pointer. It was a 6.5 to be exact back in 2020. So this area has been seeing quite a bit of aftershock sequences there um, following that six-pointer. And there's other six-pointers out here and bigger quakes as you get over here across the region near the Hebgen Lake. That 7.3 striking back in 1959. So most of these fault systems out here, you can kind of see where the, they're at on the map, right? A lot of these earthquakes just building up here, heading off in this direction. There's a lot of uh, plate dynamics here in terms of the Sawtooth Mountains and all these other mountain ranges right here. And it kind of sits up here uh, against the North American Craton. Now, we've covered this a little bit. Basically, this area is... Uh, uh, the Idaho area is the deformed region here that's, uh, you know, kind of deforming up against the North American Craton. And that is the continental crust that has remained relatively stable for the past six million years. Some of the oldest rocks on Earth are found here up in Canada uh, within this Craton area. So not a lot has happened compared to uh, the uh, dynamics that take place here across the West Coast and into the Intermountain West. In Idaho. So we get that uh, activity stirring up out here uh, in Idaho quite often. And, uh, you know, th these earthquakes can get much bigger. Very close here to where the four pointer struck back in 1916, we've seen a 5.3. So, um, you know, not too common, but Idaho is earthquake country. So we'll continue to watch that. Uh, again, they kind of line up here against these, uh, these fault ranges here, and it's just kind of. Pushing up here against the Yellowstone area. I don't think it's done anything to the Yellowstone region. Let me check here real quick and see what we got. There's the uh, there's that 4.9 in Idaho earlier this morning. No effect whatsoever there on Yellowstone. A lot of times we'll notice you know seismic activity stirring up out here, and um, you know ultimately maybe stirring up a swarm further around the region here. But it doesn't look like it. So things are fairly quiet there across Yellowstone. We'll continue to watch the Idaho area. It doesn't look like we've seen any, uh, you know, heavy-duty activity in, in terms of the aftershock sequence here. Just a couple twos and some ones following that 4.9 this morning. Uh, so, yeah, a little bit of earthquake activity out there. Uh, across the West Coast here, California region, got one, one earthquake, 2.2 uh, near the San Pablo area. This is on the Hayward Fault. I was just chatting about this last night, how, uh, you know, it's, it's overdue. Uh, definitely overdue. Um, the regular occurrence intervals out here should have had us at an earthquake around 1998 or so for a upper six, but that has not happened yet. There is, uh, you know, a period of years in terms of, uh, um, you know, leaning, so to speak. I think it's about 30 to 40 years uh, from that 1998 date. Uh, so we're up there, right? Uh, you know, 24, 25, 26 years now since that date so we just got to watch that definitely capable of producing some large damaging earthquakes out here um, at least in the upper six and the unfortunate thing about this fault system is it runs through a large population out here uh, of uh, communities and uh, 
you know, obviously San Andreas Fault um, in proximity, though, just sits right off to the west. But this, I think this fault is a little bit more hazardous uh, in terms of the uh, danger potential out here. So 2.2 uh, today or within the last hour. And then last night we've seen, uh, I think there was a little bit more earthquake activity here. But uh, we're past that window, that 24-hour period. So we'll continue to watch that. The Hayward Fault, definitely a uh, concern there. Uh, the creeping segment here of the San Andreas Fault shows uh, a little bit of smaller earthquake activity out here in the last 24 hours. Uh, same for around the Ridgecrest area and Southern California. San Jacinto Fault Zone showing some movement. Not a whole lot here across the San Andreas Fault there for now, uh, which is good news. But again, this area, like many other fault systems out here, is uh, pretty much a uh, you know about as wound up as tight as it can go. I'm not for sure how much longer. Uh, this thing's going to hold out. But they were saying that 15 years ago. So something's going on here. Uh, you know, let's hope that it's not bigger than what uh, they, they claim it can be. There's a lot of built-up stress here. 8.1 uh, is what they're claiming the uh, southern branch of the San Andreas Fault can uh, uh, can see. And then there's no doubt there's enough strain there for that. All right, Texas. A little bit of activity out here in the oil fields. A 2.8 showing the, the latest earthquake here. Did have a little bit of activity south of the border. I forgot to cover this here, but if you notice, a uh, little bit of smaller earthquake activity here off the Imperial Fault. That is due to this 5.1 earthquake earlier, this, or 4.1 earlier this morning down here into the Gulf of California. So I'm just continue to watch that. Definitely seen some, uh, some recent activity out here in these divergent zones. If we check out the last 30 days or so, we had a couple different swarms, one further down south and one up here where we're seeing uh, that activity today. Um, and that has stirred up a little bit of fours up here across Southern California. So we'll continue to watch that. Uh, although not, you know, not a whole lot of fours here in the last couple days, just, uh, earlier in the month. All right. Uh, what else we got here? The Alaska region still seeing some activity here in the last hour. It looks like a couple smaller quakes here, two pointer and a 2.1 down here across New Zealand. They did have that, uh, decent quake there last night coming up on about 24 hours now uh, the geonet server is reporting that as a 5.1 uh, here on the earthquake 3d globe doesn't look like they've seen any further earthquake activity down here across the area i'm going to bring this back up a little bit here because it wasn't quite the last 24 hours here on the globe now it is uh, yeah so not a whole lot of newer activity out here across uh, the new zealand area but I am going to just double check, give it a quick glance here and see if, uh, see there's that 5.1 from yesterday. A uh, quick glance here at the earthquake drums there across New Zealand. There's that uh, five pointer just about ready to drop off the seismograph stations. And uh, since then, there's not a whole lot of other earthquake activity. Maybe some small microquakes there. Uh, looks like around uh, the South Island area. But uh, overall, just kind of watching it right now. Fairly quiet. All right, uh, further to the west here, uh, up around the uh, Japan area, seen a handful of smaller quakes here last night. And uh, the most recent one there looks like it's going to be that 4.2 earlier this afternoon, but uh, really not seeing a whole lot of movement take place out here for now. Uh, newer activity looks like it's stirring up back here across the uh, Java Trench once again, which is a subduction zone plate boundary here across the Indonesia Islands, 5.3 and a 4.6 stirring up. New earthquake activity there. Uh, South America region, a couple threes and some fours down there. Nothing major going on. Puerto Rico Trench. Let's see what we got over here. Looks like some newer activity. Well, maybe one new activity. Uh, 3.8 there off the San Juan, Puerto Rico area there. 22 kilometers deep from, uh, it looks like a couple hours ago. Uh, Hawaii, not a whole lot stirring up out here for now. Uh, very quiet conditions, only a handful of earthquakes, nine earthquakes to be exact. Uh, I don't think we have anything to uh, look at, uh, but we'll cover it here real quick, see if there's anything of noteworthy value. From the USGS, their volcano hazard website, shows that uh, the volcano is currently not erupting. Latest update here that was put out today. Shows that uh, low to moderate rates of seismicity at the summit and along the fault systems. 
uh, continues. It says it continues, but it really isn't. It's very, very small and, and only minor amount. So this probably needs to be updated. Uh, I haven't seen any signs of moderate rates of seismicity at all. Um, so yeah, not a whole lot of new development here. Let me see what we got for our uh, deformation going on here. Tilt meter across the summit region. Um, let's go over here and check this out. Here is the last uh, past two days at the summit. Uh, gradual, gradual, very slow inflation. If you look at the uh, you know last 30 days here, it's the same area, although 30 day time span here. We're just barely going up. All that magma has been dis displaced from the summit off to the south southwest rift zone and uh, just kind of sitting down there. Not a whole lot of further development there across the summit area for now. Uh, let's see what else we got. Iceland activity. That's uh, another volcano just getting ready to uh, get active again. Although uh, earthquake activity looks like it's toning down. About 20 earthquakes here in the last 12 hours. Mainly here away from the Grindavik area, further up across these rift zones. There's really not uh, a whole lot of earthquake activity out here. Uh, and far as the eight hour run times here across various GPS stations here in the Iceland area, just kind of watching the uh, Grindavik area. Uh, Grindavik uh, still seeing some elevated activity here in these uh, last couple runs. You can see these dots right here. Uh, indicating some uh, run times there in the inflation, but uh, literally, uh, you know, I don't, I'm not really seeing anything major going on. The main area that they're concerned about, of course, is going to be this area right up here, right northeast of the Grindavik area, right around the location here where we've seen the last couple eruptions confined. But if you remember, uh, you know, back in uh, November and December, we've seen that magma dike intrusion extend pretty much underneath Grindavik and all the way up north here uh, so things are you know there's still a couple different directions this could go but the main area that they're concerned about is right in this area north of Hagefell around the Slingerfell region and um, you know it's just something we'll continue to watch and uh, report back on if anything changes out here but the key is watching earthquake activity and right now there's not a whole lot all right, space weather activity. Let's zip over here real quick, see what we got going on here. I know we've been watching, keeping a, a watchful eye there on sunspot number 3590. Now, look at the position here. We're getting uh, we're getting off there on the northwestern limb. This sunspot still remains hazardous in terms of producing some large flares. There's quite a bit of complexity here. It's still a massive region. We really haven't seen too much decaying. Um, but we really haven't seen too much flaring either. There's a couple other sunspots back here. Really not impressed with any of those. Maybe this area up here showing a little bit of growth. But again, 3590 is the culprit here in terms of any large flaring activity. Here's the last couple days of flaring. You know, since those X flares here uh, a few days ago, things have been rather calm. But again, um, 3590 is very complex. And uh, all it takes is a little bit further strengthening. And we could see some very large flares take place there. Super dynamic right there. It's a easily visible uh, sunspot there on the sun. If you got a you know solar telescope and whatnot, it's probably a you know beautiful view. Again, 3590 harboring the most complex structure there within any visible sunspots with a beta gamma delta class. Um, let's see what we got. A little, little bit of auroras kicking up here. Looks like we did see a KP index here up around the four or so. Uh, on some of these charts, uh, looks like a couple of these showing uh, KP index at four. Really not expecting any major geomagnetic storms here in terms of auroras. Uh, just kind of unsettled uh, conditions. But again, really nothing expected here in terms of any major aurora forecast. Storm Prediction Center out here. Well, you know, Tuesday is coming up here and this is uh, a uh, severe weather day here tomorrow. Or unless you're out here already, then it would be today. But Tuesday, uh, we do have a decent 5% chance for tornado probability out there across a large populated region. So Chicago, Illinois, Detroit, Columbus, Ohio, all these regions sitting out here in some, uh, some dangerous zones. So even if you aren't in the 5% zone here, you definitely want to pay attention to the sky uh, later on when things start to cook. 
the other threat here is some, gonna be some large hail within the dashed area. You guys could see a 10% or greater probability of two inch diameter hail falling out of that sky. So keep your cars uh, somewhere safe underneath a, uh, you know, an awning or better yet in a garage. Be uh, the best bet there to keep any dents off the window or off the uh, hoods and the, and the window safe. All right, numerical models out here. Uh, a lot of that colder air going to be interacting here tomorrow um, for that severe weather setup. You can see it there just kind of kicking in. Uh, California, we're not really expecting much rain here from this system. Uh, maybe into the uh, towards the weekend, we got a, a pretty strong system. But unfortunately, this is coming down out of the northwest. Here in the valley, we kind of get that rain shadow. But here in the mountains, they're going to get some heavy-duty snowfall. A lot of snow. They're talking literally feet. Let me um, check out the total snowfall out here. This is quite impressive here. If you look at the storm here, these, and it doesn't, it goes, you know, obviously it only goes up here to about uh, 48 inches, but this area in the Sierra Nevada, they're going to get around 10 or 12 feet of snow uh, from the storm system. So that's, that'd come in handy, right? For the uh, reservoirs and whatnot, as we head into the, the drier part of the year out here in California in the summertime. So yeah, pretty decent. Again, rainfall though, not going to be uh, all that impressive out here across the Sacramento Valley. But we'll, we'll see a little bit of rain. And then after that, um, looks like some more cold systems coming down next week uh, here across the Pacific Northwest. And uh, we'll just have to watch it. I mean, March can be a very very wet month out here across the west coast but uh we'll see how see how it plays out all right uh, not a whole lot of earthquake activity going on a couple spikes coming in here to the mount st helen seismograph station there uh but uh, for the most part things look very quiet very calm and uh you know just be on guard out here these little earthquakes that pop up on these dangerous faults here just kind of uh popping out at me uh, last 30 days of magnitudes out here, all magnitudes, shows, you know, the Hayward Fault, which is this little segment uh, right about here. Hayward Fault Zone extends down here um, as it, you know, branches off. The kind of numerous fault systems here branch off of the plate boundary. Uh, the Calaveras Fault one's a, a decent secondary one. But this Hayward Fault, again, runs through some huge populated areas directly underneath it, so... And there really hasn't been a lot of earthquake activity out here. Uh, 1.3, 1.1, a couple other smaller quakes here. As uh, far as 2.5 and above, really nothing on that Hayward Fault. Uh, looks like maybe one down here uh, about a week or so ago, 3.2. But we'll continue to watch that. You know, there's many, many fault systems out here across California that are well overdue and primed and locked. You know, and, and the the question I've been wondering since we've had all of this rainfall, are we going to see any large earthquakes here uh, being the, uh, you know, the result from all this rain? It does, no doubt, you know, work its way down into the fault systems there. If you really think about it, it may take a little time. Um, some of these are, you know, very strained surface faults as well, so it may not take a lot of time. But, uh, you know, it's it's uh, kind of an interesting little theory here if, if uh, you know, the accumulated rainfall and whatnot does play a part on uh, maybe producing large earthquakes, I guess. We will see here in the coming days and weeks. All right, folks. Have yourself a good day. Um, good night. Uh, not daytime yet. I'm ready for bed. We'll catch you guys back here in the morning, Tuesday morning. Take care, folks.